Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And it's Jeremy from Tested. We have a very exciting episode of projections for you today where we're gonna talk about a headset that's not out yet. Oh. No, it's not. It's the Pi Max, the world's first Raspberry Pi powered <laughs> VR headset. <laughs> that's it no. at all. Okay. <laughs> uh, there's a company called Pi Max over based in China and they've been working on a bunch of VR headsets for a long time and they're launching a Kickstarter campaign today mm -hmm. uh, for their high-end 8K headsets. Yeah, so it's pretty cool actually. It's 8K, lots of pixels. Yeah. Uh, two 4K displays, one for each eye. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, maybe even more importantly, a huge field of view. Right, and that's uh, I think a byproduct of the way they're arranging this display. So a quick refresher, the headsets that we have currently that you can buy on the market, whether it's the Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive, uh, they use two panels as well, but they're oriented in uh, basically a, a portrait orientation mm -hmm. and a combined resolution of uh, I think 2160 by 1280. Now we have seen some prototypes, for example, the LG VR headset that we saw at GDC this year. That, uh, that was basically a Vive clone though, for yes. all intents and purposes, right? Right, with a, a slightly higher resolution, mm -hmm. basically very slightly, not very noticeable for us, but a same field of view. 100, 110 degrees there. That one was a 2560 by 1440, then also split between mm -hmm. two eyes. And people developing headsets and researching VR, the next step logically was gonna be 4K. You know, get a 4K display in the headset and split that between the two eyes, um, and, and that would still be significantly higher than what we're getting right now. Uh, it was a logical next step because 4K displays are they're on the market right mm -hmm. now. You can get one in about that 5.5 to 6 inch size. Um, and the graphics power needed to run games at 90 hertz at that resolution is, it's, it's pretty substantial. Like, That's right, yep. And with a 4K display, you can also do it over a single cable, mm -hmm. right? So you still minimize that. Uh, but this is twice that. This is 8K, this is mind blowing, mm -hmm. right? So we actually got to use it. Pimax came by our office. They gave us a demo and we sat down with their CEO and founder about the technology that goes into this headset. And here's what he had to say. Thanks so much for coming here, Robin. Can you tell us a little bit about the Pimax 8K headset you guys are launching soon? Yes, uh, the uh, our Pimax were, uh, were first uh, created for the 4K yeah, as said last year, and then we want to upgrade to 8K uh, for the premium resolution and also uh, with the wider field of view. So mm -hmm. this is your prototype here. Yes, this, this is a 8K. Mm. It's it's very big. I've seen other companies do this mm. similar. So is the idea one 4K head, uh, display here and one 4K display here? Yes. Um, uh, what type of displays are these? Oh, it's a, uh, it's a new type, type of display. It's not a standard traditional LCD. It's called a customized low persistent dis liquid display. So this display can reduce the uh, response time and also increase the uh, uh, refresh rate to get uh, the more smooth when you move your hand, to get uh, the more um, experience we are. So traditionally, we, we know low mm. persistence displays have only been made with OLED displays yes. up until now. And, mm. and the idea is the, that the display is off mm -hmm. until it gets a new signal in which the new, the new image is flashed and then yes. it is off again. Mm. Is, is it the same principle with the LCD display? Uh, yeah, it's similar, it's based on uh, LCD. Mm, mainly based on uh -huh. the techno, but uh, we optimize the, for the uh, uh, process. And now uh, we select the uh, uh, special uh, SD liquid, uh, and so the switch time will be be yeah, reduced to the same level with the OLED. I see. Yeah, bec uh, because the uh, OLED, the resource is very limited, so mm. we want to uh, 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 we want to improve the traditional uh, display technology LCD. and uh, uh, 
special for VR mm -hmm. application. And this runs at 90 hertz? Yes, yeah, 90 hertz. Okay. Are you manufacturing the displays mm. yourself, or are you yeah. working with a third-party partner? To yeah, we're working with uh, our close to our um, partners, and uh, we, uh, uh, we have our, uh, our own optimization for this technology. <clears throat> so I'm curious how you mm. get 8K yeah. into the headset uh, mm. from a computer. I mean, do, do you need a massive computer with two video cards and a lot of power in order to mm. deliver 8K to the, to the headset? And how is that done? Is that over HDMI? Uh, uh, it's a good question. Uh, the, this is the 8K. Uh -huh. uh, this is uh, around uh, 16 million uh, pixels. pixels. Uh -huh. So, so uh, if, if, uh, for the average GPU, we can um, upscale to the to the AK, so we added the special video process module mm. in our headsets. The headset has a built-in scaler. Yeah, Is that scaler. Right? I see. So when you uh, input uh, below the AK, uh, for example, the uh, 2K, 4K, mm -hmm. or 5K, we can upscale uh, automatically in the headset. And can I, if mm. I have the computer, yes. can I also do 8K? Directly. Yeah, I can. Sure, yeah. Okay. Mm. It's a very expensive computer. Yeah, I right. think it's uh, maybe uh, maybe ten, ten, two or mm, yes, with the tiny t, uh, tiny time. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Um, and for if you wanted to run at native mm. resolution, if yeah. you have a GTX 1080 Ti, mm. um, it's still through the same cable. You have enough bandwidth in the one HDMI cable for oh. for two 4K displays. Mm. Mm. Uh, uh, you need a uh, uh, display port. Uh, oh, display port. Yes. Display port can do yeah. 8K. Uh, we need two. You need two. Okay. Yes. Got it. Mm. And this supports two display port inputs. Yes. Okay. We will have one side here and one side the other one. Ah. So we have, um, it's two. Uh, it's two version. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, for the high end uh, CPU and computer. We can provide uh, the. Uh, the net for AK input, so so we need uh, two HDMI's. But for every uh, uh, computer, we can maybe use one. Right. Yeah, cable mm -hmm. is enough. Oh, so mm -hmm. is, am I to understand that there are two different models that yes. when you buy it, you choose mm -hmm. to have the the version with two inputs mm -hmm. uh, or the version with the one input and a, a scaler. Yes. Ah, so the consumer will pick. They'll pick which which version. Is yeah, that, is that right? depends on their uh, computer uh, power. Right. And, uh, uh, yes. uh, on the version that most people will likely get, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to to do a scaler, uh, with, with, is the scaler only on the uh, one model, or scalers on both models? Uh, it can scale on both models. Both models. Ah. So, uh, uh, mm -hmm. We need to uh, the, for the net full uh, support uh, resolution support. We need more. Uh, more complicated design, mm. so the cost will be high mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. the regular, uh, yeah, like the ones. Mm -hmm. So if if I was developing for mm. the Oculus Rift or the Steam VR, the HTC Vive or something, mm -hmm. those are uh, SDKs I bring into Unity or Unreal or whatever I have, and I can export those mm. at those field of views, right? Which is much more narrow than yours. Mm -hmm. How do I get my games to support this field of view? Since this is so much wider, does it yeah. does the game have to be re-exported, or mm. can I play any of my VR games on this headset? Uh, yeah, uh, the game no, uh, don't need to report uh, uh, again for special for this uh, headset. It doesn't. It doesn't. Okay. We uh, we modify. Yeah, we provide uh, the special framework driver. Uh, we can yeah convert. Uh, we use our own rendering from the game, so uh, all the game can can run smoothly in our handset. Uh, all games. Yeah. Wow. It's special uh, for the, but uh, the resolution need to be high. Yes. For, mm. But you're able to render with a wider field of view. Yeah. Yes. Our I request them to implement this. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is why the rendering. And a different distortion too. Different distortion for the image to yes. match your lenses. Yes. 
Can you talk a little about those lenses and what mm. type of lenses to, to get your 200 degree to field of view and have it be clear mm. throughout? Yes. I think uh, uh, the finesse uh, lens, uh, the, uh, we call it the next generation. Uh, we optimize the, the, the option design to, re uh, to reduce the coloring effect. So, and also uh, the big lens needed need a complement design and also manufacture. So, but we uh, overcome the other things and uh, we can, uh, yeah, uh, we can achieve the wider field of view for the new, new optical design. <coughs> and how did you reduce the god rays? Is that a matter of making the glass thinner or more ridges? How was that done? Uh, I think it's way. Uh, uh, we combined with the traditional lens design and with the finesse hmm. and uh, the, uh, we uh, together with the, the new technology. So, <laughs> wow. Um, so the trackers here, th these are compatible. These are your controllers, by the yes. way. Yes. Um, and they're compatible. Mm -hmm. These sensors here and these sensors are compatible with existing Vive lighthouses. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And so are these trackers the new mm. Steam VR 2.0 trackers or the original ones? Uh, uh, currently, it's uh, the first generation, but we will upgrade to 2.0 uh, uh, version. Oh, you are? Yes. Mm. For the for the for everything that's sold on the Kickstarter will be a version 2.0? Uh, 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 we will provide uh, the standard low handsets. So standalone headsets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, some customers they have already owned the uh, Valve mm -hmm. controllers on yes. the base station. They only buy the standard low yes. headsets and they can work uh, smoothly. Mm. And uh, 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 this version is uh, the one point version. But uh, another package we uh, the whole package with the uh, base station and then the new controller. Uh, made by ourselves, uh, so the this whole page will be two point the new version uh, of the. Okay. Uh, so, so if you set up the bundle yeah. with the controller, mm. uh, with base stations and the headset, that would be version two point oh. Yes. Is that right? Wow. Mm. Okay. okay. And and then also for the design of the controllers, um, these are very similar to the Steam VR, the HTC Vive controller mm -hmm. so with the Valve design. Mm. Uh, are you also working on the, the next generation design with um, the, the gripless knuckle style CapSense controllers? Uh, yes. Uh, this is the first, uh, our first prototype. And mm. uh, the new design will be, we will add the finger CapSense mm. uh, to, to, uh, to realize the, the more features. Like that, yes. yeah. With, with mm. the same design like this, or or more or different design entirely. A different, uh, totally, totally different. different design. Oh. I mm. see. So people backing the Kickstarter, they order mm. now. Which ones will they get? Will they get the new one, or are they going to get something? A new one. The new one. Okay. Mm. So this is just illustrative. Yes. It's, it's a little different. Um, mm. Now with the touch sensor here, I noticed you're not using. It's a it's a glossy touchpad here. Is this similar to what mm. Valve has with their actuators inside with the motors? Um, f for the, the feedback? Do you have haptic feedback? Oh, yeah. Well, it's uh, for the linear motor. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. have it's built in. in. Mm -hmm. So, okay. mm -hmm. like right. That. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then also, it looks like you guys have a bunch of different accessories mm -hmm. that will launch with um, the Pimax or, or it'll be compatible with it later. Can you talk mm -hmm. a little about those accessories? Yeah. Uh, yeah, our goal is to want to, uh, we want to build a uh, high end uh, uh, via hardware architecture. So based on our uh, the, this new model, uh, the, our third party can build uh, the the different uh, uh, accessory like uh, the hand tracking inside our tracking, and also the sensor module, and the other wireless module, and uh, uh, yeah. I think it's more, more and more <laughs> accessories will come out. Mm -hmm. So mm. you won't make those yourself? That's go you would like third parties to build those? Or will you also make accessories yourself? Uh, I think we can, yeah, we will make uh, some of them. Some of them. Mm. Yeah, and uh, we open the specification to 
to our uh, our parties. Right. Uh, <coughs> you mentioned the scent module. Yes. Is that right? And that would mm. mount underneath. Yeah, mount underneath. Yeah. And then I can smell things. Yeah, uh, yeah. Some the coffee and the, the, the flowers. Mm. Do you <laughs> do you have that working? Uh, we have uh, the partners and uh, they build the uh, build the uh, demo. Mm. Wow. Uh, I think it's uh, uh, maybe uh, later on we will show a demo for the public. I'd like, public. To, like to smell that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, how different is what we tried today than what you're going to ship with the Kickstarter? What's still left to do? Mm. Is there more revisions on the hardware or on the software? Oh, uh, the ID design is fixed now, and we uh, uh, but we optimize the mechanical design mm -hmm. uh, to try to make more light, and uh, <clears throat> we'll cover the the this lens mm -hmm. uses the. Maybe uh, the unity design. <clears throat> can you talk about these? Are, these are prescription lenses. Yes. Is that right? And mm -hmm. they, you can order these with whatever prescription you need, mm -hmm. and then they magnetically yeah, attach insert to the, attach mm -hmm. to the inside. Mm -hmm. And would someone order these from you or, or one of your partners? Oh, uh, I think uh, uh, for hands we also support the glass arm. Uh huh. Yeah, but. Uh, uh, but someone want to take off glass, so we uh, provide another option. Yes. For those guys, those guys, so they can order for from our website. And we will produce, uh, yeah, the right uh, lens mm. for them. Nice. And also we want to uh, open the specification or the design, and open source, so everyone can, yeah, can. Um, can do by yeah, produce the by themselves. Mm -hmm. mm. Do you also have an eye tracking module? Yes. That, that will ad attach in the same way. Yeah, the same way. And it's a camera that watches my eye. Mm. Is that right? And and that is that developed by one of your partners or is that also you? Uh, with our partners. With your partners. Mm. And, uh, uh, with the eye tracker, also we want uh, implement the uh, full field rendering so reduces. Uh, the requirement of the GPU, right? So especially for AK. So you'll be able mm. to do foveated rendering, is yes. Wow. Mm. Okay. Um, in terms of rendering, something you guys mm. also talked about is something mm. you're calling brain warp. Can you mm. explain what type of rendering that is? How that allows mm. you to run it? Um, you say higher than ninety frames per mm. second. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a brain warp. Which is a brain warp uh, technology. Uh, we, we can enhance or double with the frame rate, frame rate to uh, reduce the latency, the host's latency around uh, 10 milliseconds. Mm. Mm. But the displays are still running at 90 hertz. Yes. And uh, uh, you know, we have the two separate displays. So we have the opportunity to do the uh, blue warp to um, get uh, the um, Get less latency, and uh, especially for some some season when you move your head very fast, and uh, if for some uh, some customer they they are very sensitive for the motion sickness. Is this mm. similar to asynchronous time warp? That kind of technology? Uh, a, a little bit uh, difference uh, for the SW. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think is. Uh, uh, there's some difference with the SW, so uh, we'll combine this, uh, those uh, algorithm, and uh, in some case we will enable uh, brain warp, and uh, uh, and also the NEOs can disable mm -hmm. for this functionality. <coughs> so it's an automated feature that just turns on, much like ASW, mm. um, and the user should not know it's on. Uh, we will uh, do more testing for for the application, and uh, we want to offer the option um, for the end user. If end user can, uh, they can disable this uh, function and, um, and as as they like. Mm -hmm.
Mm. One application that I think would benefit hugely from the resolution mm. is virtual desktops mm. or even virtual theaters. Mm. Uh, are there enough pixels in this 8K display to give me a full high definition 1080p movie mm. on a screen that's you know in front of me somewhere in VR? Yes. Is, mm. is that enough pixels to do that? Uh, yeah, I think it's for the moving, especially for uh, the la landscape moving. Mm -hmm. uh, so the wider field of view yeah, will mm, will mm, working very well. Mm. Yeah. And you also have another headset with your your launch. There's AK is mm. the very high end. Yes. And even on the end, there's the two mm. input version. Mm. Um, but it sounds like you're launching this uh, 5K version first. What's the difference between the two other than just okay. the resolution? Uh, for 5K, uh, I think it's, it's special uh, for the business edition. So we provide the OLED version. Mm. So uh, for OLED version, uh, it's uh, for uh, the 8K and the 5K, the different resolution. And also uh, the maybe the color, uh, a minor difference with the color saturates mm -hmm. and other things. It's, it's a different panel. Mm. But same field of view? Same field, all, uh, same tracking. Same size same. panels? Yeah, same size. Same size panels, okay. Mm. Very cool. Yeah, mm. and you guys have a Kickstarter that's launched now. When you estimated to ship your mm. high-end, highest-end 8K versions, mm. do you know when, when that's supposed to ship? Uh, I think uh, we will start to ship at uh, the end of this year and uh, two, uh, you know, different bundle. So we will provide it uh, to, from this year, the end of this year to uh, Q, Q1 mm -hmm. uh, next year. Awesome. All right. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. You're welcome. All right, so Norm, what did you think? I mean, we got to put the headset on. Um, my first impression was that it's super wide, like it, it envelops your field of view. Right. What did you think about the pixel clarity, though? Um, the screen, so the display, as, as Robin was saying, it's an LCD display. And mm -hmm. a big fear for, for me going into this was, can an LCD panel, can two LCD panels give you the benefits that OLED has? High contrast, uh, very bright screens, and also low persistence, more importantly. That's mm -hmm. the technology in the OLED panels that lets you basically not have smearing because the image goes away very quickly. And when there's no data, you don't see anything. So what you see is exact movement. And I think they achieved at least the low persistence in the LCD, because there was no smearing for me, moving the head really fast back and forth, moving it around. But just like you, the wide field of view, I think, was the, the big benefit of this. I mean, uh, it certainly is, is a huge impact. It, it's one of those things where once you try it, and then you go back and put on a current generation headset, you're like, Oh, <laughs> like binoculars. I'm wearing a scuba mask. Right, and and even though that's not to say that you can't play great VR, we have great have great VR experiences with the current headsets. That goes without saying. The content is focused in the center, mm -hmm. and the content that we were using, we played Fruit Ninja VR. Uh, what I tried to do is see if I could play it, you know, in my periphery. Now, something that this doesn't address though is the rendering of the game itself, because the game developers have to enable wide field of view for you to actually get the full benefit. What the Pimax software is doing is kind of distorting, and so you're, it's almost like watching a, a four by three movie on a widescreen TV. It's not that bad. That's horrible. But it's, it's the same concept. <laughs> it's no, the no, same no. concept in, in, it's in like, that it's, it's stretching out the edges, the that's, field, that's it. your extra field of view. In the yeah. center, everything is clear. That's it. So, so it's like one of those modes that a TV has where it'll be like adjusted widescreen or something it, like that, right? Yeah, that's what I meant. Where yeah. it takes the center and it tries to keep that one-to-one. -one, right. And then it takes the edges and it just yoink. And it stretches them way out, and and that is very very evident. Now, Absolutely. now, does that matter? You, your peripheral vision is extremely blurry. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're not actually like looking, turning your eyes to the left and right, it actually is, is quite a minimal the the impact that it has. But it does. Uh it's a disconnect between what the game information is trying to show you. Absolutely. Because if the game is only designed to show you a hundred degree field of view, you know, if you're if you're playing Fruit Ninja or playing a shooter and an enemy or a piece of fruit is right there, yep. but then the headset, in this case, a 200 degree lens, gives puts the image 
to your edge, mm -hmm. you know, you also have to be able to adjust and compensate for where you think it is. I totally agree. I think the current gen headsets are a more perfect solution because right. uh, they do look quite like what it's supposed to look like. And, and this is, I don't want to say a hack, but it is definitely stretching uh, the limits of the t of the resolution that the game is able to deliver to the headset. Now, now the what, benefit though what, is that it works. Well, the benefit is that it, it is in a, in many cases, you know, it's more immersive. It is more immersive, and it also it just there's no compatibility problems. The game that you're going to run off of Steam VR or in the Oculus platform yeah. using Revive is just is going to fill your full field of view in some way. I want to know: Are they going to be able to get the games to? output a native field of view. Right. Because they are re-warping. I mean, because their lenses are not the same warp factor as uh, you know, current gen headsets. So they are running it through a different process. Hopefully they can find a way to get the games to export or output the correct field of view as well. I mean, in that case, I mean, I would be very curious to see that. I think that could be very compelling. Now, the other thing, of course, is the pixel density and mm -hmm. whether that being an 8K multiple times, mm -hmm. almost an order of magnitude higher than what we currently have, uh, how that content looked. I and think I think when a lot when people hear 8K, they think, oh, this is going to be it. This is going to be. It's going to look like the real world. It's sharp edges. <laughs> no anti-aliasing needed. Holodeck with you know with a head strap on it. It wasn't that. No. It was noticeably sharper. So one of the demos we did was I, we had them install big screen VR, which we like using. And big screen on the current headsets, you can watch movies just fine. But reading web pages, you've got to scale that virtual desktop kind of close to your right. face. Um, we had this connected to their, they're running it off a laptop, loaded up New York Times, made the text real small, and it was totally readable. No, it, that was enjoyable. It's a huge improvement, but you can see the pixels. Like, you can totally on, see the pixels. On stationary static images, logos, or a web, web page, you can see the pixels. This is not a glass window into some you know, virtual world. And the, the screen door effect, because there is a screen door effect, isn't like the fine kind you would find on the, even the Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive. It is a Fresnel lens they're using, mm -hmm. or some type of hybrid lens. Right. And it doesn't have the, the linen lines I described on, on the Oculus Rift, uh, nor does it have the very clear it looks closer to the Vive, I think, hmm. than to the Rift. Um, I'm questioning what the sub-pixel arrangement is on, on these LCDs that they have, uh, because it doesn't look like your standard RGB stripe sub-pixel arrangement. So mm -hmm. it could be something closer to a pentile uh, arrangement, which means that even though know, you have two 4K panels, these 4K panels may not be equivalent to a 4K panel with RGB subpixels. Right. And I think for some circumstances, this headset is going to be per the best headset to wear. If you're watching a movie in VR, this is going to be the headset you want. I mean, honestly, I have never been happy watching a movie in any current gen headset because of the resolution. You know, it's floating screen. It's some. It's both the combination of that resolution and the field of view too. Not so much the field of view for me, honestly, because you know I'll put the movie screen in oh, right in the center, the range that I can see it perfectly comfortably. It's just that I'd rather watch it on my monitor or my television mm -hmm. because I I can see all the pixels. Right. With this, I was trying to get in. You know, ask the developer, can you fit a 1080D screen? In the amount of pixels you have, uh, given the a 8K panels, and and it seemed to he. I seem to understand that that you could. Uh, when we tried big screen after the interview, I was very impressed with that pixel clarity. Uh, I just want to be clear, it's not that holy grail, oh my gosh, you can't see the pixels. Right, it, it's it's not, I mean, it's not gonna, it, I, I once using it, I really, like, I would love to see this be the next gen or right. next next gen, but it's not the end. Like, exactly. There's gonna be improvements past that. Yeah, the God Rays, I thought, I thought you could still see some, but they were they were uh, improved. They we, were diminished. They were diminished. Yeah. Like we saw some white logos and a black background, which is kind of worst case scenario. And mm -hmm. they were diminished. I thought they they definitely better than what you would find on the Rift. They definitely, they wouldn't look like shining line god rays. It was right. more like a like a light haze, mm -hmm. low haze uh, around the bright white spots. Now the biggest caveat though was that even though the headset is technically two four K displays and eight K headset, the content that we were all using was actually four K. Content. And you mentioned before he was running everything off a laptop. I mean, we should maybe start there. Right. I'm not sure that we were getting the full 90 hertz from that laptop. Mm. Uh, we, when we played Fruit Ninja, I swear I was seeing lower frame rate stuff. Some tearing. And, and I asked it, not so much tearing, but just actual choppiness of, uh. of things moving across the screen. And I went home and I, and I booted up Fruit Ninja, and of course you don't see that at all. So 
I'm curious what frame rate we were actually running. I asked, I said, is this 90? He said, yes. I'm not sure it actually was. Um, but yeah. It's scale. So the laptop or whatever computer you're gonna plug this Pimax 8K into, you plug it in, it's actually gonna output only a 4K signal through your DisplayPort cable, mm -hmm. and there's a built-in scaler that then scales to the 8K. So we've never seen, still haven't seen native 8K content no. on this yet. And the thing we found out afterward is that the Kickstarter reward, what they're actually advertising right now at 450 bucks or 500 bucks after the early bird, uh, will be that scaled experience. Uh, and to get a native 8K experience, it's actually gonna be a separate headset, a pro model of the headset that they may have as a bonus reward later on, mm -hmm. or offered as another option. Something more expensive perhaps, but something you need to plug in two inputs. Two display port cables. Two display port cables. Coming from your beefy PC. Yeah. You've got two video outputs running into you know their own displays inside the headset. Right. Um, so I'm I'd love to see that. I'm not sure, you know, exactly what games are gonna support that, because they actually have to support mm -hmm. that kind of output as well. The um, other thing for me was also the lenses. I, don't, I think the lenses mm -hmm. could use some improvement. I will say that the design of the headset was extremely comfortable. It felt light. Uh, they will have a more a, uh, a strap accessory that looks more akin to your um, your Vive, the, the Pro head mm -hmm. uh, accessory. The audio strap, yeah. The audio strap. Uh, that's going to be a separate add-on. But even their native strap, like it felt secure, it felt light. Given and the size of it, it felt surprisingly light. My glasses fit in. This no, is no problem. No problem at all. Mm -hmm. My glasses fit in perfectly. I was really pleased about that. And these are pretty big glasses. Uh, but the lenses, I thought could use improvement because there was distortion on the outer edges. Right. So, oh, you noticed a, a ring that was affecting the contour of the of the game world. Yeah, and and having a distortion on the outer peripheral mm -hmm. of your lens, I think is okay because again, your vision there is, isn't that great mm -hmm. anyway. But because it's that distortion also happened on the inner lens as well. Yeah. With my stereoscopic vision, I could actually see almost like a distorted ring around some of that content. I didn't notice that at all. Um, it, I don't. Maybe it's because you're wearing glasses, or mm. maybe it's just because I was immune to it. Uh, but I did not notice that at all. What I did notice was my IPD was not correctly adjusted. Right. And I went to adjust the, the twister, and it didn't have an effect. And he was, so he asked me what my IPD was. I didn't know it off the top of my head, and he was gonna adjust it in software. Mm. So I'm a little concerned about how that is. Is, is this like a, just a potentiometer that adjusts the software thing, or is there no physical IPD adjustment? Yeah. Um, I mean, I could see VR fine. It just took a, a few moments for my eyes to adjust once I put the headset on because it wasn't dialed in correctly. Yeah, and they're really making this headset modular. You can see on their Kickstarter page that you know, there's an option for the headset. The headset works with Steam VR. That's mm -hmm. a great thing. Yep. They're not developing their own tracking right now. It's outside-in tracking that works. It's a known quantity. Mm -hmm. And people who have Vive systems right now, we're surprised to learn, can use their base stations and their controllers. Mm -hmm. The radios in your controllers will work inside a radio on their Pimax headset. You mm -hmm. don't have to have them tethered or have a separate dongle. Yeah. That's all good to hear. Mm -hmm. Now, they will have their own base stations and their own controllers. And the controller prototypes that we saw, I didn't think were good at all. No, I agree with you on that one. Uh, the, the touchpad was just plain mushy. I mean, yeah. it really felt uh, just The cheap. trigger was mushy, the touchpad was mushy. Yes, it was a two-stage trigger. These two pieces were actually coming apart. I mean, it just didn't look right. That said, this is not their final controller. In fact, he said that they were gonna develop something more akin to the uh, Knuckles controller. Yeah, something that was maybe a wand that had the cap sense functionality. Right. Uh, which I don't think they've promised in their Kickstarter campaign that that final controller mm -hmm. will have that. It may be a separate SKU, maybe right. something out later. They were very vague about what the technologies would be in in the shipping product to meet their Kickstarter or Kickstarter uh, reward uh, delivery periods. Yeah, uh, there, same. there were some people curious about whether or not you could get the controllers separately, yeah. uh, and that's not the case. You no. won't be able to buy those separate. But I wouldn't want to, if they're just like the prototypes, I wouldn't want to get them separately right. anyway. Uh, it's also the case with the base stations as well. Uh, whether they are be using the version 2.0 like Lighthouse tracking system or mm -hmm. the 1.0. Valve has suggested that all developers move towards the new tracking system because mm -hmm. the new trackers will be backwards compatible with the current uh, lighthouses, um, but the uh, the new uh, lighthouses will only be compatible with the new ones. That's right. So whatever they're shipping now, if it's based on version 1.0, you'll need to use 
you'll have to use the old ones. And if you're planning on upgrading to version 2.0, hopefully that's something. They said it's that's what they're going to ship with. They're, they have a version 2.0 Lighthouse right. in the works. So we can only hope that if people are backing their Kickstarter using that tier, that they're going to get the version 2.0. Mm -hmm. uh, there are also accessories. Modulus. Mod yeah, modules. modules. Uh, so I, it's actually, it's got USB jacks on both sides. It's got one up on the top and one on the bottom. They want to make this a platform. Mm -hmm. You know, which is more power to them. Uh, they want people to develop uh, mod modules that can attach anywhere on the headset that, that they can find. And they um, advertise in the Kickstarter campaign a, a lot of different potential modules. Eye yeah. tracking, uh, scent, emittance, um, you <laughs> yeah, know, inside the, out tracking. Dude, uh, give me the scent emitter. I, I want to see that implemented in everything. And it, it became very clear that these modules, at least the eye tracking um, and the, the scent emittance, mm -hmm. were going to be third party partners and yeah. weren't going to be anywhere near uh, their, their delivery time. Uh, but what they did demo was their Leap Motion um, attachment, which fit onto the bottom of their headset. And it, it seems like they've been working on this on the house. It wasn't a Leap Motion off the shelf. It was their own implementation of it, or one that maybe Leap assisted them with. But it, it fit very well. It had a USB Type uh, Type C connector. Type C connector underneath, and it plugged right in. And the field of view of this Leap Motion uh, was very, very good. I, very. Good. I, I think far and away beyond what you get from a standard Leap Motion sensor. I've attached a Leap Motion to my headset before and I've played their demos and they're all very, very interesting, but there's a range at which your hands leave the field of view and you can no longer see your hands in front of you. With their scanner, it went to your periphery. I mean, Absolutely. I think you could put your hands in a full circle around here and they would always be tracked. And track as well as the current Leap Motion can track, which is to say, mm -hmm. it's impressive, but it's not perfect. There's some gestures, yep. some signs. The Vulcan salute wouldn't actually be tracked under Leap Motion. Nope. And also there's a software issue, like what games are gonna support that? But right. if there are a flood of games or software experiences that support hand tracking as a complement maybe to a controller tracking, uh, this would be a really good implementation of that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So what do you think? Would you recommend people buy the Pimax? There's so so many caveats. I mean, having not seen what a full 8K experience is yeah. like or what that price point for that Pro model uh, is, I, I mean, that's what I would want. Uh, the 4K scaled to 8K, I think it's really good. Uh, but if the lenses aren't fixed, if these are their final lenses, I couldn't recommend it. I think they need to fix the distortion I saw on the inner lenses. Yeah, I would. this frame rate issue is the sticking point for me. I, since I saw that choppiness in Fruit, in Fruit Ninja, I want to see it again on a proper PC. I want to run a, games on my own system where I know what to expect. And I want to see if it delivers as smooth an experience as what we get from current gen. Yeah. Um, if that's the case, I would say the headset alone, matched with you know original Vive controllers, is is very compelling. I think for movie watching, uh, probably for driving games, when you want to see things in the distance or a small like rear view mirror, for virtual desktop use, this is the best experience you can have right now in VR, yeah. purely for the resolution. That's right. Um, the the field of view is something that you don't appreciate so much until you try going back to the current gen, when you really notice just how constricted it, it currently is. And something that they have do have to their advantage is what they're selling right now, this $450, $500 standalone headset, mm -hmm. is still probably going to be at least a generation ahead of what consumers are going to be able to buy from other companies. Mm. We expect that whatever Oculus comes out with next, whatever HTC comes out with next, will probably be in the 4K range, and 8K is still going to be ahead of that. So mm -hmm. if you really want all those pixels and you're happy with the scaling, um, it's something that you, it's worth looking into. I think it's, that, that's not a, a, a crazy price, 450 bucks. 500 or 500 dollars yep yeah. what about the 5k headset that was oled yes yeah so they do have another headset that are launching the kickstarter and it's it is 5k it is oled they had a prototype wasn't using the same oled panel so we couldn't really speak to mm. the image quality of that and the demo we saw with that headset wasn't a demo where we had to read small text, or it was, it was a mostly dark demo. It seemed more akin to current gen resolutions, though, in terms of the, the pixel density and screen door effect. Yeah. Um, but it'd be interesting to, I mean, I'm glad that they are still working on a no LED solution, at least on the lower end. Mm -hmm. And it still has that wide field of view, 200 degree field of view, yeah. so you're gonna get those benefits uh, still, as that, well. The field of view is certainly immersing, but I wanna see that solved. I wanna see native field of view. I don't wanna see a stretch field of view. Yeah, so that's, the, that's our impressions on the Pimax 8K 
VR headset. It's, uh, if you're interested, they do have a Kickstarter uh, campaign and we'll have a link to that in the description and comments below. Uh, but we'll be back next week with another episode of Projections. Feel free to ask us more questions and we'll try to relay them to our PR contacts over at Pimax as well. But until then, Jeremy and I will see you next time.